So today's episode is going to be Tales from My Papa, The Bard of Sneedville. As I have mentioned before, my grandpa, Papa as we called him, um, his name was Fate Seal, had acquired the name The Bard of Sneedville because he was a great, great, great storyteller. We would sit around <clears throat> on Sundays or any other day that we were at his home, and he lived in a holler. And we would sit in the floor around his feet and listen to him tell stories. He would keep he would keep you mesmerized. He was such a great storyteller, and he also wrote. He was also he also wrote great stories as well. So he had tales of <clears throat> his childhood. He had tales of his uh, of hauntings. And one day, I'm going to tell you uh, some stories of Haunted Hancock, where he grew up. But today, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you this. This was my grandfather. Uh, they did a local, they did a story about him in my local, in our local newspaper. And um, Papa was born in 1913. Um uh, he lived to be, oh, I can't remember how old he was when he passed away. But this um, article was written in um, Valentine's Day in the year 2000. So, as you can see, it says the Bard of Sneevil. So, I'm going to read you this article about my papa. It's, there's two different articles about him in this paper, so I'm going to read these to you. The Bard of Sneevil. Fate Seal recalls stories of his youth in East Tennessee. Sneevil. Before you meet Fate Seal, it's best to hear from his family. They tell stories, too. Mostly about how the 86-year-old storyteller was their entertainment, moral beacon, and teacher. And how he still is. We'd sit on the porch swing, and me and my cousins, and listen to him all night long, said Jenny Sale, one of Fate's 31 grandchildren, who is my cousin. He'd turn out the porch light and tell us ghost stories in the dark. Doug Sale, Fate's 53-year-old son, said, which is my uncle and Jenny's dad, you can imagine back up in the mountains with no electricity or radio, listening to him. It used to be everyone around here was a storyteller, but he was the king. <clears throat> now, his hearing's bad. His eyes are no good. If he tells you something, it's something he's seen, even if it's only in his head. Born in 1913, Fate Seal was named after Jean Lafitte, the smuggler, pirate, and patriot who fought for General Andrew Jackson in the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812. Ever since Fate can remember, people have pronounced his first name, Fate, F-A-T-E. His name is F-A-Y-E-T-T-E. His small house sits in the head of a holler near the top of Short Mountain, seven miles northwest of Neville. Like the rest of his family, uncles, aunts, parents, and grandparents, Seal made his living growing corn and tobacco in the deep folds of the mountain where the snow doesn't melt till spring. Since the death of his wife, Minnie Dexter, Seal has lived in his oil and kerosene stove heated house alone. At the age of seven, he wrote his first story. The inspiration came from an old hen, and the subject was death. She had a flock of chickens with her, and one was sickly, and it died. Seal said, I was sitting on the porch, and I said to myself, I'm going to write about that little chicken dying. I found a piece of scrap paper, and it took me 15 minutes to write at a patch as big as my hand. I remember how it started. Poor little chicken. He can't follow his mother no more. Daddy came in and said, Fate, go out and get me a cold drink. They had a spring. So they had to go out and get their, their water from a spring. So I went to the spring, and when I came back, Daddy was reading it. It made him grin. <sighs> I'm going to stop right here, uh, and I'm going to say, my great-grandpa, was a, to me, he was a stern, stern man. I never did see him smile, and I never did see him laugh. I never did see him cut up. So, that had to be a great accomplishment in itself. If he had criticized me, I guess that would have stopped me from having the pleasure of writing anymore. 
But Daddy was a man of good judgment. He was solid, but he loved fun, too. <clears throat> Seal's stories fall into two categories, the funny and the supernatural. When humor is involved, he has a tendency to explode into fits of laughter that lead to coughing and tears, alarming family members and visitors alike. The thing about my papa is he was a smoker. He wasn't just a smoker but he rolled his own cigarettes from his own homegrown tobacco. So you can imagine how potent that was. So yes, he did have that smoker's cough. <clears throat> a sense of humor is an attitude that's a great asset to anyone, Seal said. You find so many people that soured up and they don't get much out of life, do they? When telling a ghost story, Seal's demeanor changes entirely. His eyes, clouded with age, see beyond the listener, and the narrative unfolds with broad sweeps of his hands. I always had a liking for writing stories and telling them, Seal said. TVs and radios and so on like that, they just detract. After I'd get my stories wrote, I'd wait a day or two and read them aloud. Most of them, I just threw into the fire. If I could see good, nothing would suit me better than to write the ones still locked inside my head. Even if I threw most of them in the fire, I'd be reading them out of my mind. And this happens to be my grandparents when they were young. This is my pap my papa and this is my mama. My mom looks like my mama. So before I get into the next one, I'm, I'm going to tell you, he kept us all mesmerized. He was such a great storyteller. <clears throat> he uh, went to be a, a junior in high school. And when, back then, he had to walk miles and miles and miles to high school. And he got pneumonia and almost died from it. So he wasn't able to go back to school. So he dropped out. I'm sure he would have loved to go on to college, and he I could see him being a professor, actually, at the time, because he was such, such a smart man. He was stubborn as I'll get out, but he was such a smart man. <clears throat> so, here's another one he told, and it is called The Mysterious Lights of Short Mountain. Two threads run through virtually every ghost story Fate Seal tells. One is a windswept family cemetery perched on the side of Short Mountain a quarter mile from his house. The other is a ghostly luminescence all of fire rolling across fields and through the neighbor's front door. Or sheets of blue-green light that followed you down a dirt road. This story I have heard many times. First, the cemetery. It's still there. And the road that passes below it is still unpaved. Some of the fieldstone graves markers date back to the early 1800s. Judging from the etchings, a good many of these buried were children laid to rest before they were old enough to crawl. <clears throat> the graveyard, covered in broom sage and gnarled pines, overlooks an abandoned farmstead in a deep hollow. As far as ghost stories go, even in Hollywood, couldn't concoct a better setting. Now the fire. Seal saw it in many forms and always in close proximity to the family graveyard. As Doug Seal, Fate's son, recalls, people used to walk these roads at night and never used a lantern or flashlight. They just felt with their feet. Here, then, is a sampling of Fate's ghost story. <clears throat> I was coming up the hollow from Briar Creek Church with my sister and her cousin. It was nighttime, and they were behind me, having a big time laughing and what all. I wanted them to hurry up, so I thought to myself, maybe I'll scare them. I, <clears throat> I said, look, girls, look back behind you at that light. I never seen no light. They looked back, squalled, a great big squall, and one grabbed one of my arms, then one grabbed the other. I thought they were going to wrestle me to the ground. I said, girls, I was just playing a trick. And then I looked back and seen a blaze head high following us. I said, girls, don't look back. But I looked back and it was following us along. We started up a little hill and then it was gone. Talked to Doug 
his son, and he'll say that, yes, his father actually saw the mysterious lights and the others living on Short Mountain did too. Been a lot of people that's seen different things up there they couldn't understand, Doug said. Doug has a theory. He says virtually all of his father's stories of mysterious lights occurred in the vicinity of the graveyard. He believes the light, whether in the form of a fireball or a pale pulsating glow, may have been gas jack-o'-lanterns, luminescent gases released from the caves. That's what science thinks it is. Also, as for fate, he simply says, I can't figure it out. None of that stuff. And it leaves it at that. <clears throat> Where my grandfather grew up, um, there, were, there were a lot of caves. Uh, they He grew up probably about a mile from where I grew up. <clears throat> and my mother grew up there as well. And back in the day, you know, people had to travel a lot by foot because they didn't have cars so and they just it was not uncommon to get out and walk during the night um and walk by the light of the moon or just you know by in a path that you have learned and you have mem that you have uh, memorized <clears throat> and know where to step and where not to step but there's another story that he told and <clears throat> we touched on this once and um on Brooke's channel when she was doing country's cornbread. But there was this family that lived close to where uh, my grandpa grew up. I don't know if this was before his time or, or when it was, but I've, I have heard pap my papa tell this many, many, many times. And it was this um, family that, um, that had a, a boy and he had a couple of issues, um, you know, mental issues from birth. <clears throat> and back in the day, you know, people tend to look on that as an embarrassment. They tended to, um, you know, shun them, uh, put them away, uh, any number of things, because they didn't want to be embarrassed by the situation. Well, <clears throat> when this when this boy was old enough um he had the boy there was a cave and he played he had the boy to stay in the cave and um his mother would uh sneak him food every once in a while so that um you know he would have some that she you know back in back in the day <clears throat> me and tim tended to uh rule the roost and their uh their stay was law and women just you know, had to go along with it. Well, she wasn't agreeable with it, and she would go out, and she would uh, visit with her son, and she would take him food. And, well, he, um, the man found out about this, and he was livid. I mean, he was just livid. So, <clears throat> the rumor was that um, he unalived his son, and um, they was um, a family that lived there that actually saw the dad walking down the road carrying a big black bag that would have been the size of the sun. So after that, every time you would go by this cave, you would hear things, uh, you know, super supernatural things. And it was just a number of things that happened. So these these are the kinds of things that my grandpa would tell me. Um, he also told um, a story. This is not supernatural, but um, there was a guy who was um, out working the fields, and uh, he lived. There was a hill. And he was uh, moving rocks or or something. And his little son uh, snuck out of the house and was going to go find his dad. Well, it just so happened that as he was walking through the field, a rock rolled down the hill and ran and rolled over the child. And the child didn't make it. I've also heard stories about that too as well, that, you know, that there has been 
things that happened that happened around there as well. Now that was just an accident. That was just uh, the kid had snuck out. The mother didn't know it, and um, the dad didn't know it, and it was just a freak accident that happened, and and the child didn't make it. But like I said, there's also been things told about around that area as well. <clears throat> My papa didn't just tell um, haunted stories, but he told many, many, many stories. There was also where my mama and papa lived. Uh, they, like I said before, there's, they lived in the middle of a holler. And to get to that holler, you either had to walk up the holler from the main road, or the road that I lived on went up around through what we call the back valley, and you could walk down that road, and you could go to my grandparents' house as well. So, um, that he has told many, many things that's happened there as well. There was, um, behind his house, there was a holler, another holler. This, there was a holler that came down and then there was a holler that went off from his. And that's what they called the Roberts holler. Uh, there was a family that lived back there that, um, their last names was Roberts. But she had the name, her name, um, she had the name of being into witchcraft and things would go missing from people if she wanted them there was this guy who um had a, a pocket knife and she wanted it and he wouldn't let her have it and she said well i'm gonna get that well she ended up with it and no one knows how i mean these are stories that i have been told i remember as a child we walked up in that holler once where her her home was and i remember finding old pieces of um, dishware that had like the blue patterns and stuff on it. Um, and I was always scared to death of that hollow. Uh, that, you know, this could have been partly told to keep us kids in line that I would have nightmares about her, that she would come, you know, she would come up from the floorboards and all kinds of stuff. But like I said, it may have been to keep us kids in line as well. There have been many, 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 as Brooks, as we talked about Brooks Channel, in that holler of the little old man. And he would have probably been from the 1800s or early 1900s. He was just a little short guy. He would, um, and I had a scissor tail coat on, and many people have, have, have seen him and had had experiences with this guy. Um, I know that um, my dad's friend had an experience with him. I know my papa did. I know my sister did. Uh, my bus driver did. My cousins did. Um, I think my aunt did as well. But I don't know if he was, like I said, there was many, there was lots of caves around there at the time, way back. And, um, <clears throat> He would, uh, people would see him walking along and running along and, um, uh, he, I reckon he's chased people. Uh, he tried to get in the, he tried to get in the car with my dad's friend when my dad was walking my mom down the hollow, uh, when they were dating. He, uh, was scared to death. I never did witness this. And, um, I, I know my papa had seen this. And I came, I think it was one time when he was on his tractor that he saw him. But like I said, these are just some of the stories that my papa has told me and us kids as, as children. Um, like I said, back in the day, people had to walk from place to place. My uh, papa had a car for a while. I don't remember him ever having a car. I remember us having to take him places <clears throat> because, you know, he didn't have a car, but I have a, my mom's got a picture of him with a, with a car. But, um, I had an awesome childhood sitting around the feet of my grandparents, listening to tales. Uh, like I said, he was the bard of Sneedville for a reason. People would come from miles around to hear his tales. Um, he, he they had a TV, but 
we would turn the TV off just to listen to my papa speak because he was that great of a storyteller. I have many, many, many great memories of that hollow. They, the great memories far outreach the scary ones. Like I said, we have walked out of that holler many times at 11.30 at night by the light of the moon to meet my dad after work. Wasn't scared. I'm more scared of uh, cows and horses than I was of anything. Maybe a sna occasional snake, but nothing supernatural. I myself have never ha had any supernatural experiences, uh, but lots of my family members have. And do I believe in supernatural? Yes, I do. I believe that the potential for supernatural is 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 possible. Like I said, I've not witnessed anything. I'm, I don't have any first-hand experiences, but I know other people have. And I know there's um, a lot of skepticism around this, but I do think that there are restless spirits. I do think that there's people who, you know, have unfinished business that um, are still roaming around occasionally trying to get uh, answers. I don't, and I'm not saying I want to experience anything supernatural. I would love to go on uh, ghost tours. Here locally, we have this, um, uh, it's a prison and it's called Brushy Mountain State Prison. One of this, and that was, this was where, where uh, James Earl Ray was. And uh, I think it was James Earl Ray. I think it was. And his was a very notorious prison, very mean. And, I, and now it is turned into a uh, museum and a restaurant and a souvenir store. And they also have concerts there. I'm wanting to go witness that. There's a Waverly Hills in Kentucky that I'm wanting to go to. Um, there's lots of ghost tours that I would just love to go to, but but my thinking is, unless it is just a re, um, a residual haunting, you know, where it's just something that just plays over and over and over, just like a movie, regardless. Um, your ch better changes would be better if you were in a very small group than it would be if you were in a large group. So that's what I plan on doing in the future sometime if I can get. I know I'm, when, I know my sister Kim would go. I know she would. We've talked about this plenty of times. But I hope you enjoyed this story about my, my papa. Like I said, it was a great article. He was a great man. Stubborn as I'll get out, but he was a great man. So... I hope you tune in. I, if you enjoyed this, let me know. Um, I'm going to talk to my mom and see if I can find some more stories that she may know that he told. I wish I could get mom to tell some things. Mom's a great storyteller teller as well. My dad has stories of his... Uh, that My dad has um, stories that he grew up with too, and they're pretty good, good stories. So if you enjoyed these, let me know, and I will try to tell some more stories and some more uh, tales that I grew up with so comment down below let me know what you think let me know uh if you want me to do more and i'll try to get some more research done and see what i can find i grew up in a very small community of um six thousand people and everybody knows everybody and there's lots of stories to be told uh you know i'm from hancock county home of the bluegrass artist, Jimmy Martin. Don't know if anybody, if you all know him, but Jimmy Martin grew up there. Uh, also the birthplace of country music superstar, Morgan Wall. So we do have some history there. And there's also some uh, great stories to be told. So like I said, if you wanna hear some more, let me know, comment down below and I will try to get them out. So until next time, don't forget to like, to subscribe, to hit that notification button, and to share this video. Um, I'm open to suggestions. Until next time, I love you guys. Bye.